Hi, and welcome to Real Life with Jenny. My name's Jenny Senapadaratna. Grab your favorite drink and a snack, and we will get started. Today, I have strawberry black tea from Sri Lanka, and I have no snack. You know, I'm just not that organized today, so <laughs> here we go. Let's get real. I hope you have a better snack than I do, and your life is going a little bit better. I am in the midst of complete chaos, right? It is back to school here in where we live in Minnesota. And I have to be honest with you, I'm feeling very out of sorts. This is my first year in 16 years, plus four years beyond that. I took a year off between those two that I'm not doing back to school. Even, um, you can go back to high school and junior high, I suppose. So I'm not really sure how to handle this not going back to school thing. <laughs> but that's okay. I wanted to talk today a little bit about what I've learned through the Summer of Miracles. So a couple months ago, I was praying and I felt like God said this would be the Summer of Miracles. And so, you know, I got really excited because whenever you hear the word miracles, it is a big deal. Miracles are something that um, cannot happen without God's intervention. You know, it's not something that you necessarily, like flowers do grow. Yes, it is a miracle that they grow, um, but flowers do grow and there's a science behind it. But miracles are hard to explain sometimes. And so I was really, really excited about the Summer of Miracles. We decided to make a financial goal for our ministry, and we really got very excited about what God was going to do. Now, I want to make it very clear, God has done some amazing miracles this summer, but most of those have been inside of me. <laughs> yes, I know. We all are growing and learning to be better people, and definitely I am growing and learning to be a better person. <laughs> I guess I need more growing and learning than the average bear. I don't know. So I was really, we were praying for a financial miracle. God really did a great thing and we raised more money than we've ever raised before. But it was half of what we were hoping for. Now, you know, when you are asking for something from God, it is really hard when it doesn't fully come through, right? Sometimes you have this thought process that Lord I need you to do a B and C and he is like you know what I'm gonna do D instead that wasn't one of the options but I'm gonna do D and you're gonna see my moving and you're gonna see my hand in that and that's not an easy thing it is very hard sometimes when you have your mindset on this is how I need my miracle to go and it doesn't go that way to accept that it's still a miracle now, I understand that the money that we raised, we did one-time gifts. Um, we had people donate just one time, and we raised more money than we've ever raised before as a ministry, which is huge for us. And I found myself slightly disappointed, slightly like, Lord, we asked for more. And how sad is that? <laughs> I really had to take a moment and go, okay, I see your provision. I see how generous people were. And I know that you can supply the rest in a different way. And that was a hard kind of swallowing your pride moment. So often when we're talking to God or we're trying to make goals or things like that, we tend to put um, a number on something that maybe isn't supposed to have a number on it. You know, I know that when you're making a goal to lose weight, you should always have like, this is my goal, weight. Um, but I have learned for me that when it comes to weight loss, it just needs to be about the daily, not necessarily about my end goal. Um, because I can get so caught up in the failure of not being where I should be that I forget to celebrate where I am. And that is what I've learned this summer of miracles. I have learned that I so often live in the where I want to be and not where I am that I miss the miracles that God does in my small day-to-day -day walking through life. 
one of the things that God did this summer that um, maybe isn't a huge miracle in someone else's mind, but for us, there have been things like we got some we got my daughter's passport months before we were supposed to so we could go on a trip. We got her into a class that really we should not have been able to get her into for a co-op that she's very excited about. In fact, she starts it today. Woohoo! You know, just simple things like that, that normally I would have been looking towards the future and towards the end goal and towards that number and not necessarily at the small miracles, um, even though they weren't really small the miracles that were happening on a day-to-day basis. I found that my true miracle was sitting and waiting for God and hearing the still small voice that I've heard about all my life. And of course I've heard it before, um, but I don't have not taken the time to just sit and wait Um, And that is so hard. I am not a sit and wait person. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe you are. Maybe you're the kind of person that can just be in silence. Um, I'm not. In fact, I really enjoy silence in theory. (laughs) I'm not very good at it in real life. You know, I have like this, like, I need silence. Shh, everybody quiet. And then I turn on Alexa so I can hear some music, you know, (laughs) or I'm like, you know, I'll be silent while I read my book. It's just, that's not silence. It's all, it's bringing something in. And I have found that as I sit silently, I can hear the voice of God through the word of God or through something that I see. So we were on vacation this last week. And we were on this train and it was quite, it was quite a old train. It was not a new train. (laughs) And I was standing outside in between the, the train cars and I was watching the rocks. There were all these beautiful, we were in the mountains and all these beautiful rocks. And I was looking at them and I felt like God said, how unique the rocks were. And I was like, oh, that's a strange thing to hear. You know, here I am sitting in this gorgeous mountain area on a train. No one's around because my family was sitting inside where it was warm. (laughs) And I was outside where it was cold. And I hear how unique the rocks are. And I was like, well, that's a bizarre thing to think or, or, you know, hear or whatever. And I realized as I kind of just let it settle into my spirit and I was thinking about and I was watching the different rocks and how they were all different colors and all different shapes and all I mean every rock was unique not one rock was the same nothing was the same the moss grew differently on some there were flowers there were trees coming out of them every rock was unique and different And as I let that settle in and I started pondering it, I realized how God made the rocks different. How much more does he love me and how much more has he made me unique? And I really felt like I was supposed to learn in that moment how special I was and how I am so unique. If God can make each rock unique, each person is unique. So often I feel like I'm just going with the flow. So often I feel like I'm not making a difference and what I do does not matter. And I am just a small cog in the big world. And I want you to know today, if you take nothing away from my summer of miracles, take away what I'm going to take away that God has made us each unique. He has each given us each talents Um, Whether you feel like you're talented or not, you do have talents. You do have things that make you special. Even the color of your hair is unique and special. Um, Mine comes out of a bottle, (laughs) but it's unique and different um, because my hair dyes differently than other people's. You know, you may look around and everybody looks exactly like you and you do not feel special. 
but God sees you. And when you look at the rocks as a mass, those rocks all look exactly the same. When you look at a mountain, you're like, oh, they're all the same, right? They all look the, then you look closely and you see the unique grooves and the unique colorage and the, the way that they're shaped and how special each and every one of those are and how much more we are. And how much more God can use our talents and our abilities to look at the world differently than anybody else. I realized on that train that nobody else, probably out of the 200 people on that train, were looking at the rocks going, wow, those are really unique and they're all very different. (laughs) I have a very different brain than anybody else. God has made me very special. And as I've walked through this summer of miracles, I have learned to look around, to stop looking at my end goal, to stop looking at my, um, what I want to accomplish and see what I am accomplishing, see what, what things I am doing right now. I so often do not stop and go, wait, I just made it through a really tough situation there. I did got in the wrong line again at Walmart. (laughs) which is every single time. I got in the wrong line at Walmart and I had a good attitude. Way to go, Jenny. You know, I need to start taking time and celebrating those small things. So as the summer starts wrapping up, I would love for you just to take some time and start Stop looking at your end goals and look at how far you have come. Look at what God has done so far. Look at where your finances are now compared to where they were a a year ago, compared to where they were six years ago, compared to where they were 10 years ago. Maybe you're not where you want to be financially. Maybe you're not where you want to be spiritually. Maybe you're not where you want to be in your relationships. But where have you come from? Where has, how has it gotten better? You know, I know that things crumble and fall apart. And sometimes that's all we see is the crumbling and falling apart. But I remember when my mom and dad got divorced. I was 15 years old and my life crumbled, right? That's what happens when your parents divorce, your whole life crumbles. And I remember thinking how much stronger my relationship with my mom became. And yes, I lost a relationship with my dad and that is really sad and I've worked at that since then and we we are working towards a better relationship. But because of that moment and that crumbling and that destruction, something good came out of it. And in the midst of your pain and agony, God can bring goodness and can bring healing in other areas. So if there's something in your life that's crumbling, take a moment and see what God's doing. See that God is still holding you up and he sees how unique and he loves you and he's got a plan for you. You know, we're not rocks. We get to move around. We get to make a difference. Rocks don't. They don't get to make a difference. And in the Bible, it says, praise me before the rocks cry out. God can do things with rocks. (laughs) You know, there are so many times that he talks about um, mountains and rocks in the Bible and they flow water out and they, God says that they can sing and that we can be moved by our faith. You know, different things like that. Like that is such a simple, non-living thing. What more can God do with you? What more of a plan does he have for you? Even in the midst of chaos and disorganization and not even being able to find a snack. (laughs) What can God do for you this week as you take a moment to see how he's moving? Well, you can find us at Real Life with Jenny on Instagram and on Facebook. We would love to connect with you there. Or you can go to ChristConnection.cc slash Jen. All of my information is there. And I'm beginning to book my Christmas season as I can come to your church and talk to the women in your church. So I'm beginning to book Christmas. So if you're interested in that season, I would love to come out and do a Christmas tea or just a fun time of sharing what God can do 
um, in this really great life that we have. You all have a great week and take some time to look around and see what miracles God is doing in your life.